Good morning, my fellow gardeners. Uh, it's currently about 8 o'clock in the morning, and it's 85 degrees here in North Texas, and we're scheduled to be up to 106 today. Many of my subscribers have been asking how has my garden been faring in this uh, heat dome that we're in, and what I want to do is share with you my successes and my failures uh, from this growing season. Come plant with me. get going on this garden tour I want to talk about my container garden if you are a previous subscriber of the channel or even if you're new here just know that I did have a container garden that was on one of my mid decks uh, that I started at the beginning of the season uh, but unfortunately due to the excessive heat and this Texas Sun I did have to relocate my uh, container garden because it was just getting way too much Sun and was burning everything out here at Urban Gardening with Gray, not only do we grow uh, vegetables, but we also grow ornamental plants as well. For instance, like my Monstera. Uh, but what I've had to realize with these container plants is I had to relocate them because they were just getting way too much sun. But as we can see from this Monstera that I actually had purchased back in April uh, for my wife's birthday, it's actually thriving being under this deck because when the sun does get up uh, in high into the sky like around noon it still does get adequate sunlight uh, just on this left side as you can see from how the leaves are pointing outwards towards uh, the rest of the uh, garden show unfortunately one of our failures this year <laughs> this summer I decided to take a uh, my family on a vacation and unfortunately the pine berries that I had growing in this container up here uh, did not survive when I was gone on vacation. Did survive the uh, excessive heat or for instance like my lemon creeping thyme. Currently the lemon creeping thyme is uh, still doing well. I've propagated it off of it two or three times. Uh, it still has that really fresh lemony scent but that is because I did relocate it out of that direct sunlight. As you can see this is where I had many of my containers once before but I, like I said to you before uh, that excessive heat that we had and excessive sun I did have to relocate them to my raised bed. This excessive heat I did have to relocate my Myers lemon as you can see I got some uh, caterpillars that uh, really was enjoying it but we were getting severely sun scorched here so and I do have some leaves that were curling back from underwatering and that's seriously just because with the excessive heat um, we've been chasing the uh, hydration so relocation uh, was necessary because I want this plant to uh, continue to thrive so relocating I felt was in its best interest and also we have our original basil plant. This is our parent plant that we've propagated on countless times. Um, it was actually struggling while we were gone on vacation as well, but I have brought it back. But I do need to go in and kind of deadhead all of these uh, flowers that's been bolting off of it because once the plant starts, uh, once it starts bolting, uh, that's when the plant will actually start to uh, kill itself off. So I'm going to go ahead and deadhead all of these flowers because again, I've had this basil plant for an excess of about two years now and I want to continue to grow it uh, and continue to propagate off of it. Before we go down into the raised bed garden, two things that I want to show you here is my wife's uh, she shed area, so to speak. Uh, this is where we come out and relax when it's not 105 degrees. Uh, and if you've seen previous videos of mine, you might have seen this featured in the uh, bug zapper video. But um, here we have a lot of shade loving plants and ornamental plants. I have a couple of corn plants here uh, as well as over here. Not to mention the um, African bamboo. And then right behind it here, I do have some lettuce that has been struggling to survive, but being in this shade, again, under this natural canopy that we get, it's actually been, been doing okay. But again, we've been just chasing the hydration, chasing the hydration because of the excessive heat. We go from the uh, she shed area or the uh, entertaining area. I do have some, uh, Boston ferns that were uh, donated to me by my mother, but they were in dire need of help and repair. They were severely root bound. So what I ended up doing with those plants is actually hacking off about half of the roots, cutting off the dead. And since I've done that, 
uh, these uh, both of these Boston ferns have actually been thriving pretty well now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over into our gym slash uh, plant room main thing that I wanted to show you in the uh, gym slash plant room is uh, my most prized possession in here is this is our uh, second bird of paradise that I had um, my kids actually got for uh, for my wife for her birthday as well. Uh, I love it because uh, this one is actually growing some new leaves here. Uh, it's doing fairly well in this uh, this gym area because this room actually functions kind of like a sunroom, but it's not 100% sunroom because we do have. Uh, we have a ceiling fan in here and we have lights in here so it actually does have outlets and stuff so it's not a traditional uh sunroom so to speak but it's a great place to uh house my plants when we have the excessive heats that we've been getting right now and especially in the winter with some of my tropical plants like my bananas and such they can be transplanted into this room from here we're going to gravitate over to our raised beds our sable raised beds that we have right down here First thing I want to take a look at in this raised bed is uh, another failure. Unfortunately, the excessive heat has killed off most of my potato plants. Uh, yeah, it was a, a great loss to lose those potatoes. But again, when the climate is changing, you have to change your, your growing habits. Uh, but I do want you to take a look at this corn plant. This is <laughs> what we would call a volunteer corn plant. Um, the seed actually fell in um, unintentionally when I was planting the potatoes. Um, and this corn plant actually started to grow and started to, uh, to, to, to sprout. So I just, I said, you know what, forget it, we'll leave it. And we look over here past my watermelon plant to where I actually intended on planting our corn plants right here this is my my row of corn but the interesting thing the volunteer was planted at the same time now i have not looked this information up so don't quote me on it but i'm wondering if the corn actually likes companioning with the potatoes if the potatoes possibly give the corn more nitrogen because remember corn really loves nitrogen and i'm wondering if that's an offshoot of being companion planted with the potatoes because again these plants were both planted at the same time these are thriving these are struggling to survive so i mean both of the conditions are pretty much the same they've been given the same fertilizers they've been given the same compost and the same watering schedule but you can see the stark difference so again i'm not saying that that's a hundred percent that's what caused it but i mean it leads suspicion leads me to believe that that might be the culprit what we'll do is we'll uh kind of do another test next season and see if that's the case now while we're looking at the corn i also want to show you our watermelon that is actually doing fairly well we actually have a watermelon growing in there uh, my kids are going to be super stoked about that even though we have this excessive heat here in North Texas, of course, we're not doing as bad as uh, Arizona per se, but even though we have this excessive heat, as long as we keep a regular schedule for our watermelon, um, it's, it's actually doing well. It's, uh, it's producing. I stated to you before, a lot of my containers got relocated to my raised bed. The logic behind that is that my raised bed garden is on a, uh, a watering schedule. It has soaker hoses, it has means of being able to get water plus because of the juniper that we have right above even though we get our six full hours of sun it casts a little bit of shade and then i get a little bit of uh, a breeze that comes off the creek so this area of my yard is a lot cooler as opposed to the rest of it so that's why i relocated a lot of my uh, my containers here now unfortunately you can see i, I did lose my mint plant sad because this one mint plant is what started all of my mint garden and so I lost the parent uh, not to mention I also lost another strawberry or here it is another strawberry and then this was a uh, spearmint uh, propagation that I lost but next to it I do have a peach and two apples that are actually still doing pretty well 
from here, you can actually kind of see some of my, let me raise the camera up here. You can see my Arikaras. Uh, they're reaching the end of their life cycle, but my Arikaras clearly have gotten up to 10 feet tall. I was so proud of them and I'm waiting to see if we get any uh, sunflower seeds off of them so I can uh, perpetuate and keep the cycle going. From there, we see we have several, several, <laughs> several of my uh, tomato plants. Again, we're chasing the watering here. You see the leaves are starting to curl down because that means they are struggling to stay hydrated. So I'm going to just continue to monitor the watering and eventually we'll get some reprieve uh, from this excessive heat, hopefully. And then over here, now you can see the yellowness in the leaves here as well, so it looks like it needs a little bit of fertilizer here. But these are my spoon tomatoes. I showed these uh, when I think I did my first garden tour. And you get these awesome tiny little tomatoes that are just packed with flavor. Next to it, I do have my bell peppers growing here. And then looks like we have some more of our basil down here. Now, of course, we have some bolting going on here with our basil, so we need to deadhead those, uh, those uh, flowers that's growing there. But look at how this basil is thriving. This started off as just a little propagation off of that main plant that I was telling you about. But being companion planted right here by our tomato, this basil is thriving. Now we're on the back side or the front side of our raised bed here. Right here I want to show you these are cabbage that have been grown from scraps um, that I got from the grocery store. Uh, they, and I know you're thinking, well, cabbage should be bigger, shouldn't it? Unfortunately, I did get an infestation of aphids that actually took over these cabbage plants, so they're on the mend right now. But how I remedied that cabbage uh, infestation was I actually sprayed it down with some neem oil. And so ever since uh, spraying with the neem oil, the plants have been coming back. I got a few bites on there, but it's not as bad as it was. Uh, funny enough, these plants are actually about a year old. Unfortunately, I haven't had any cabbage off of them yet because the pests kind of keep getting me <laughs> with these aphids. Um, could I plant some basil over here? Yes, I could. And you know what? Um, I may eventually do that. I just haven't got around to it. But the neem oil has been uh, been keeping those um, aphids away. Uh, as you can see, we have a uh, peppermint down here. This is another peppermint that was in my container garden. It's struggling as well, uh, so that's why I brought it down here to the raised bed to see if we can get it to uh, to bounce back for us. Oh, and while we're down here. Or around here let's check out these are those spoon tomatoes I was telling you guys about so if you haven't seen these things yet they are so cool so small and so good my kids love them now we're gonna go back to the raised bed because there's still another side that I need to show you but I wanted to show you uh, my Swiss chard and my strawberry garden right now um, the strawberry pyramid was an entity to itself but again, having to relocate all my containers, I just brought my containers of strawberries down here with the, um, the strawberry pyramid. And since doing so and putting it directly up under this juniper, the uh, container garden strawberries have been bouncing back. They have not been producing a whole lot, but typically with strawberries, you don't really see uh, a large quantity of berries until you get into your second year and this being our first year here walk around to the other side of the raised bed garden i do want to take a moment to show you uh, look there we go right there see it's that grasshopper there yeah he's been eating good he's been getting in on my <laughs> on my tomatoes here so we got to get him uh, but these are some red robins that have been growing here and let's see, what else do we have? Oh, and then we do have our Roma tomatoes here. The Romas have been doing fairly well. These are a good sauce potato, but honestly, we've just been dicing them up, putting them in salads, or my kids have just been eating them um, as soon as they come out of the garden. As we back away from uh, the first raised bed, 
you can see over here uh, around the top of the uh, canopy my grapes have been taken over the top and I truly love that once we get a nice healthy vine system going on here I'm gonna propagate it and possibly put a second one over here in this corner so that we can get two going so we can start seeing some um, some bunches of grapes uh, start to flowering And on many of occasions, I've been asked, how do I keep birds and squirrels and rabbits out of my garden? Well, today I'm going to share with you my secret weapon on how I keep these pests at bay. Allow me to introduce the ultrasonic scarecrow from Caroline. This thing is amazing. It repels rabbits, raccoons, birds, skunk, deer, dogs, cats, and other nighttime pests and animals. By utilizing infrared animal detection and PIR motion technology, it emits ultrasonic waves, powerful LEDs, and a strobe light as well. See, look at this right here. You know what this is? Yeah. That's armadillo right there. We got another one right here. See what the armadillos do is they stick their nose down in the ground searching for grubs. And that's good that they're out searching for grubs because the grubs, of course, tear up the roots of my vegetables and such. And this is over in a walking path where I don't have any, uh, where I don't have anything growing right now. Not to mention the bobcat that unfortunately has taken most of my birds. My birds used to be known as Ike and Ikeettes, but unfortunately now we're only down to Ike and Tina. So thus, you see the conundrum. away from the uh, main raised bed we go over to our salad box here and the salad box it's again excessive heat has been struggling um, it's actually been producing a lot of cucumbers and tommy apple melons um, I've been picking off of them daily and it looks like we have another ready to go here and let's see and I got a few down here among some of the struggling leaves so I'm gonna get in here and prune a little bit so that I can cut off some of the dead so that the plant can focus back on production oh and look right up here we have a Tommy apple coming in uh, soon back side of the uh, salad box we do have a couple of two cucumbers that are growing right up on top of the box uh, excuse me, on the top of the uh, trellis right here. So we'll be picking those soon as well. Ah, spider web. All right. And now I want to show you this one guy. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, right up in there. All right, you see this one here? You see that irregular shape that we have here? You know what causes that? That's from inconsistent watering. And again, in this excessive heat, and I'm gonna keep mentioning it because it's getting hot as I'm actually doing this video, it's a challenge to keep up with the watering and that's how you get those weird shapes in your cucumbers because essentially you're not staying consistent enough for the, um, for the watering cycle. And now right below, I'm gonna show you our squash plant. Now our spring, our summer squash is actually doing okay as far as its production goes but the downfall is this was supposed to be a vertical growing squash plant and as you can see unfortunately i forgot to put a stake in it so that it can grow up as opposed to down now the reason behind that the reason why i want it to grow up is to stop squash vine borer infestation and as you can see from this discoloration here, we might have some squash vine borers that have made their way into this vine being so close to the ground. So what I'm gonna probably end up doing is actually injecting it with a little BT to see if that helps and saves the plant and keeps it from dying. Uh, we'll, just, we'll just see how it goes. And I'll keep you guys posted. One more thing I wanna show you before we go. 
um, is over here by our cabana pool area. Again, these are not vegetables, but these are ornamental plants. I have a mass cane uh, plant going here. Uh, again, we have some more Boston ferns around it, as well as I have a few larger ferns. I can't remember. I think they're uh, Queen Mary ferns. I'm not sure. But these, as you can see, I got some brown leaves on there. These were actually purchased from one of my big box stores. Uh, so this one actually needs to be repotted. It actually is just placed in this pot here. And some of the dead needs to be cut back as well as some of the roots. Uh, but I got these guys on clearance for like 10 bucks. So I had, I had to get them. Uh, and I wanted to put them out by my pool because I wanted to add more of a tropical feel to my pool element. Um, because just recently, I don't know if you can see here, I actually built a deck extension off of this original cabana. This cabana, let's see if I can get a good enough shot. Still need to paint that board there, trim it up. But <clears throat> right here was our original footprint for the cabana. And that was cool and all, but we needed more seating area for when we have family and friends come over and visit. So I actually got some free lumber from uh, a really cool guy who was actually restoring a 1930s uh, theater and this was leftover lumber that he didn't want to go to the landfill. <laughs> I'm a firm believer in recycling so I went and picked up this free lumber from him and I took that scrap and essentially I created this deck extension to uh, give us more of a seating area and then so since I had this extension I decided to go ahead and add some greenery to it to continue on with this uh, tropical aesthetic that we have going over here in the pool area. All right, <clears throat> um, it's starting to get hotter. <laughs> uh, the temperature's starting to raise on me. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, garden tour, garden update, uh, and see what I've been growing over here at Urban Gardening with Gray. Uh, if you found this video entertaining or if it gave you some garden ideas for your own garden, uh, please make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, maybe even share it with a friend. But I do appreciate your time, and uh, thanks for watching. And as always, remember, enjoy life, enjoy family, and enjoy your garden. Thanks for watching, guys.